Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video I am going to talk about how you can create your own Azure AI agent. So this is again one of the most frequently asked questions from my viewers wherein they want to come up with your, uh, their own agent utilizing their own data. So I am going to show you and this particular solution is no code solution. It means you need not to write even a single line of code to perform this activity. So let me quickly show you this. So in order to get started, we need to go to Azure portal and once you're on the Azure portal, you can go ahead and create the resource group if it is not already there. So in my case, I'm doing everything from scratch. So I will go ahead and create a new resource group. So let's give it some name. And I will stick with East US. Review plus create and it will go ahead and create the resource group for us. Next thing is we need to go to Azure AI Foundry and here we need to create a hub. So if you want, you can go with the project creation and it will eventually ask you to create a hub, but let's go the step-by-step -step thing. So I'm choosing hub and here you need to select the resource group and the proper region. So my region would be East US again and here, I'm going to provide a unique name for my hub and this is the name for the Azure OpenAI services. And, and this is useful when you want to create or deploy your own model. So let's say if you have already deployed some model, then also you can go ahead and use it from here. So in my case, I have deployed two models earlier. So that's why it is listing over here. But if you have not done anything and if you are doing it for the very first time, you can still go with the default one, which is the name which is shown over here. Otherwise, you can go and create new one. So let's click on review plus create. And next, I will click on create. Uh, it is going to take close to a minute here because it is going to create all the four instances which we will be needing, like the key vault, one for the storage, machine learning. So let's give it a few seconds and soon we will have our instance up and running. You can see three uh, storage account, cognitive services and key vault is already there. Let's wait for the last one. So here you can see the fourth one is also running, which is machine learning service. I will give a few more seconds here. It is still deploying one service. So here you can see deployment succeeded. Let's go to the resource. So I will click on go to resource and here you can see the link for the Azure Foundry. So click on this link and it will take you to a new web page wherein you will see the resources for your Azure AI Foundry. Now we have created a hub. Next thing is we need to create a project because project is the one which is going to hold our instances of the Azure OpenAI and everything. So. I'm going to click a new, create a new project and you can provide some name here. Click on create. And it will go ahead and create a new agent, uh, project for us. So like you can read here, it is saying projects are easy to manage containers for our work and the key to collaboration, organization and connecting data and other services. Okay, so it's done. We can see the keys and the project strings, uh, project connection string. Next thing is what we can do is here you can see on the left hand side. So here is the new option, which is agent and this option is still in preview. So let me quickly click on this particular option. And here it is asking you to select the Azure OpenAI resource. So if you have already created one, then it will list over here. But if it is not there, then you have to create this one while creating the hub like we did before. 
so in our case we have created it while creating the hub so it is appearing over here and let's click on this let's go and it will ask you to deploy the required model because till now we have not deployed any model so these are the available models so let it load and I am going with GPT 4.0 mini click on confirm and if you want you can customize these things otherwise you can leave as is so click on deploy and it will go ahead and deploy GPT 4.0 mini for us so here you can see the model is deployed let's refresh it okay next thing is we want to try out this particular model with the agenting capabilities so what we can do is uh, click on this first and here you can see as soon as you select your agent you can see that it opens on the right hand side so there is a playground wherein you can try and apart from that before moving on to the playground what you can do is here are the few options so these are the instructions here this is the place where you need to place your instruction and if you have let's say multiple models deployed then you have to select it from here so in our case it's just one model so it has automatically selected that one the next important thing here is the knowledge and the actions so like I said we will be creating the agent which is going to work on own uh, on our own data so in this case knowledge is the place where we need to add our data and if you want to know more about like knowledge and what all actions it is supporting then you can click on this learn more and it will take you to the web page so right now it is still in preview so it is not supporting every single thing uh, but let me quickly point you to that so here you can see knowledge tools as well as the action tool so right now it is supporting just the code interpreter and I believe these options will be in soon but just for the demo purpose and like I said still it is in preview so we can just go with the bare minimum features I will click on add and here we have the options so from where do you want to add your data so keep this uh, demo simple I will go with my local file upload but in upcoming video if you want I can show you the demo with using Azure AI search as well so let's go ahead and click on files and here you need to select the file so I'm going to take the same file which I have taken in my previous video which is holding math problems and here you can provide name of the age this vector store a new vector store we are creating so here you can provide the name of that and click on upload and save and make sure that you are uploading the file which is in the correct format so whenever you are uploading it will show you the whole list of extensions which are supported so make sure that you are following that and next thing is you can tweak these parameters whatever the temperature you want top values so I will go with just one value so I'm saying get me only the best value and this one is the this is the place where we need to provide the instructions so let's go ahead and write some instruction here so I'm going to remove this one from here So here you can see that we can't remove it because it is just a placeholder so I'm going to paste my content here so I'm saying you are an AI agent who can solve math problems based on the data you have do not answer anything outside the document if you don't find anything in the document say I don't know so th this is a simple instruction I am giving and most important thing is you will notice that there is no save button here and it is automatically saving based on whenever you are moving your cursor out of that control so we have done the change here then we are moving out and as soon as we are out you can see that it got saved okay so let's go to a playground and try out something that is taking time to load let's give it few more seconds okay so 
this is the instruction which we have given earlier now let's go ahead and ask some question who arrived first at the play date so this is the question i'm asking based on the document i'm having so who arrived first at the play date and it should come up with the answer that T arrived. So let's see. Yeah. So the answer is T, T arrived first at the play date. And the most important thing is here you can see the grounding uh, data as well. So if you will hover over it, you will see that this was the PDF I took as an input. And this is the very first math question uh, which is written in this PDF file. So this was my question. And if you will solve this question, it will tell you that, okay, who arrived first at the play date. So till now we have not written even a single line of code and we were just playing here and there. Next thing is let's say if you want to utilize this agent inside your code. So although it's not part of this video but I can quickly uh, show you how it can be utilized. So what you can do is you can go to overview and I will quickly grab this project connection string from here and paste it. I will walk you through this code in a while. Just give me a second. I will replace this thing. And then I need uh, the key for the, then I need agent ID. So for agent, what you can do is click on agents and this particular is the agent ID. I'm going to grab this one and place it over here. Okay, so another thing here is if you want, you can create another agent, you can create multiple agents basically in the same project. So like I just clicked it and it came up with another one. You can rename this agent and whatnot. So whatever the agents or whatever the number of agents you want, you can make it from here. And this is the source code I'm utilizing. So what I'm doing here is I have uh, imported these two packages. And then I'm constructing the project client object out of the connection string, which is the project connection string, which we have just grabbed it. Next thing is you need, defi you need to define the agent IDs. So I'm having just one, but if you're having multiple, you can just provide them as a comma separated and it would work. So I'm grabbing every single agent ID and pushing it into this particular list. Next thing is like, we know that whenever we are uh, talking with the agent there is a very important concept called thread so similar thing we are utilizing over here and if you don't know what this thread is and how we are communicating it i would recommend you to watch my earlier videos in which i have explained what are ai agents and how we can get hold of those so here i am creating a thread so thread is required to communicate between two parties whether it is the ai agent or the human but the thread is the most basic entity and here I'm providing my question, which is nothing but the user string. And I'm saying who arrived first at the play date. Next thing is I'm constructing a message object. So that message object is going to take the thread ID and the role is the user and the prompt which is provided by the user. Next thing is we need to associate the thread ID with every single agent. So in our case, it's just one agent, but if you are having multiple, you can just a loop through it using the for loop or any other loop and just put it into the run and next thing is here i am setting time dot sleep because it will take time for the agent to think and get back to you so it is always good to uh, make it pause for some time so as it's just a demo so i have added a 10 but in your case you need to handle this in different way so if you feel that the given time is not sufficient, you can increase this delay based on a requirement. But of course, you cannot go with this hard-coded value. You need some polling mechanism to check whether agent is done with the processing or not. And once uh, everything is done, we will check whether we have any data in the messages or not. And once we have the data, we can just extract the content out of it using the text and the value. So let me quickly execute this. Okay, so before we uh, run this program, what you need to do is make sure that you have logged in to Azure using CLI. So in my case, I have already done it and that's how it is working for me. So if you want, you can use different mechanism to authenticate this, but it's completely on you. So let me quickly execute this. Let me 
like I said, just I have set the sleep timer to 10, 10, so it's going to wait for 10 seconds and then we will have the response. And here is the response that is saying that Kia arrived first at the play date. So you can see that the way it was working in Azure AI Foundry, it is working in the similar fashion in our Visual Studio code as well. So it is just a very rough code. If you are right, if you want to write production ready code, then you have to wait for some time until this feature is completely released. And of course you need to add try catch block. You need to handle lot many things here, but it's just a very rough sketch of how we can do the things. So once things are released, maybe I can come up with a proper video in which I will show you every single thing uh, after uh, about this particular code. And that's all I have for today. Do let me know in comments what other things you are looking for. Thanks for watching.